Welcome to the show that takes up no more than five minutes of your time, but could help you gain massive real estate knowledge. It's Five Minutes in Real Estate with best selling author Shane Willis. Well, hello, Shane Willis, Pensacola Real Estate Expert, bringing you today's episode. Um, it's Wednesday. Got some family in town here uh, from Hurricane Florence. That thing looks massive. So if you're in that path and you listen to this and they've told you to evacuate, do me a favor, get the hell out. Um, it's not something that that you should play with. Uh, we do have experience with those type storms here. Um, and I know that when Hurricane Ivan was hitting Pensacola, I was showing my kids where the president lived at the time. We were up in Washington. DC, um, and I had went to visit my father, who was at the time living outside of Baltimore. So, if you're in an evacuation route or even close, just get out. Um, I got nephews and nieces here from you know 100 miles inland, but they're still worried about how much rain and how much uh, wind is going to be even inland. I don't think they're really worried about storm surge, not 100 miles inland, but. Um, flooding definitely is going to be a case. And I read in the Wall Street Journal this morning that they were talking about power could be out for weeks. Um, I do know that after Hurricane Ivan hit here, uh, we did have power out for weeks. Generators were hard to come by. Um, I literally called up and down the eastern seaboard as we were fixing to head back home to try and find a generator. And the only reason I found one was because my father knew someone who had one. It was used. He knew what was going on, but it worked properly. He said, listen, just give me a hundred bucks and it's yours. So I was able to come back with a generator and, you know, I was up there for a week, you know, went hit and probably stayed a little bit over a week afterwards. When I came back down here, it was another two weeks before we got power on. Um, so we were running everything based off of a generator. Uh, and this storm looks bigger than Ivan. Uh, this looks Katrina size. So uh, I know we're not going to talk about that the entire time, but... I did want to say if you're in that path and they've told you to evacuate, just get the hell out. Uh, your life is not worth it. The stuff can be replaced. Um, just get the hell out. Okay, let's talk real estate for a minute because this is five minutes in real estate and I've done spent two minutes talking about hurricanes, but that will be affecting real estate in the Carolinas and Virginia and probably even North Georgia and some of that other stuff. Okay, so uh, as we enter now into the fall, um, past all hurricane stuff in the fall i get the question all the time is now a good time to sell <clears throat> because you hear this that there's a spring buying season and that more buyers are out during the spring than they are in the fall and as we enter into the quote-unquote holiday season which i guess we'll be entering in soon of course you go to home depot lowe's walmart i'm sure they have christmas stuff up already uh, much less the halloween store has been open a couple of weeks uh, so we're entering that holiday season so it's now really a good time to sell traditionally there's a misconception that now is not a good time to sell and that you should wait until spring to do so uh, it's actually not real true so i pulled some data for that and let's talk about it uh, the pending home sales report pending home sales report said that pending home sales are down 2.3 percent so supplies continue to be down uh lauren yoon which is the National Association of Realtors' uh, chief economist, he was quoted as saying, the reason sales are falling off last year's pace is that multiple years of inadequate supply in markets with strong drive growth have finally driven up home prices to a point where an increasing number of prospective buyers are unable to afford it. This across the nation. All right. So demand for housing is strong. 2019, they're going to continue. That demand is going to continue. But supply is low. I've been talking about that for, gosh, it seems like forever. I'll be nice when I can talk about a regular, normal supply and demand. But the demand side has been strong all year, and the supply side has been low all year. If you look um, around our area right now, we've got less and less inventory than we did even this time September last year. But demand's here. Uh, people, I always chuckle a little bit. They're like, October, October, who wants to move in October? Well, you know, for the federal government, October is the new fiscal year. So that means all the new money comes in. 
I can't tell you how many people get orders here to Pensacola, Naval Air Station, Whiting, um, Corey, all in October. Because it's the new fiscal year, so now they can start spending 2019 money. They're wrapping up into September, going into October. So that's not, there's no case there that people don't want to move in October. There's a lot of people want to move. There's also a strong, strong case, especially here in the fall, for a buyer to be able to pick up a property and close on it by the end of the year so that you can homestead it. You as a settler, let me talk to the sellers for a second, you may want to think about taking advantage of this time frame to have less competition, less competition than you would if you waited until springtime. You wind up having less competition, which means you may be able to push the price up slightly higher. And if we push the price up just slightly higher, um, you know, we, we, need, we don't need to get crazy with it. But if we push it up slightly higher, we may be able to grab that. <coughs> so, um, and usually we're not going to have too much trouble with appraisals. Again, as long as we don't get too crazy with it. If it's 300 and we go 305, we can probably push that just because there's stuff there. We try and go 350. Yeah, that's not going to work. But your supply is even less now. So you have less competition. All right. Existing home sales reports. That was the pending home sales report we talked about a minute ago. Existing home. Total housing inventory has decreased 0.7%. This represents a 4.3 month supply of current sales price. So this is a national number. I can break down Escambia County and Santa Rosa County for us. Anything under 100000 is less than one month inventory. I pulled that report because I got a new buyer this past week or two days ago looking for that price point. And I, I pulled that number up and I went, listen, 0.9. So if we find something that even comes remotely close to what you're looking for, you may want to, you know, seriously consider putting it under contract and at least start our due diligence. Uh, there are some price points here that are a little higher, 350 to 400 is about 5.8 months right now. We've actually teetered back towards a slightly seller's market, but it's basically a neutral market. Two to 300, two to 250, 250 to 300. Both those are sitting in the fours, four months inventory, uh, but that's going to continue to fall. Sales are now 1.5% below a year ago. <clears throat> Most of these decreases, though, have been led by the Northeast. Um, so a lot of these guidelines, I wanted to make sure that I give you national numbers and then I'll put in the show notes some of our regular numbers here. What do we have as far as, uh, matter of fact, I'm going to put up this week's numbers for you so you can kind of see what we have. But here's the bottom line. It's very simple. As we enter the holiday season, is it a time that you should consider selling? Absolutely. There is less competition at this point. Some people just do not want to move during the holidays. Um, and if you don't want to, if you don't have to, then fine, that's cool. But if you're even considering it, you may be able to take advantage of a lower interest rate. Because we do think interest rates are going to be creeping up to fives in the next three, four months. So it could be four and a half, which is where it's sitting now. It could be five soon. You're going to take advantage of lower interest rates. You're going to be able to homestead your new property if you're staying here in Florida. If you can get your new property under contract and close on it by the end of the year and sell this property at the end of the year. And, of course, you get the tax benefits. As long as you've lived in the property for two years, you shouldn't have any capital gains unless you made a massive investment uh, and picked up a property for $40,000. And now it's worth four hundred. dollars And maybe some tax implications there. But I'm not the accountant. Go talk to your accountant. Anyways, should you list, should you list now? There is absolutely a ton of reasons why you should seriously consider it. Um, if you're thinking about moving in the next 12 months or in the next six months, but you were waiting to maybe after the new year, mm, your competition is going to be stiffer then. So you may wind up losing out on some income, losing out on some purchase. All right. That's all I got for you today. As always, if you've not subscribed to get the tips, tricks, graphs, infographics, get over to 5minutesinrealestate.com. That's 5minutesinrealestate.com. Also, make sure you like the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Shane Willis, the realtor. I appreciate all the hearts and thumbs ups and the likes um, from the different players. If you hadn't subscribed on whatever your player choice is, do that. Uh, SoundCloud's been giving me a lot lately, so I appreciate all the hearts there. And finally, if you found any value in this episode or any other episode, all I ask at the end of every episode is that if you found the value in it, share it on social media for me. Have a great Wednesday.